This figure shows a stress-strain diagram of typical reinforcing steel as obtained from Figure 3.7, Eurocode 2, Part 1. They are hot roll steel and cold works steel. The stress strain curve differs slightly between the two types of steel. There is a sharp turning point on the stress strain curve of the hot roll steel, while the turning point here is not that obvious for the cold work steel. The sharp turning point here represents the yield point of the hot raw steel. In order to determine the yield strength of the cold steel, you need to draw an offset line at 0.2% strength. This offset line intersects with the stress strength curve at this point and this is considered as the U point of the core work steel. The ultimate strain is represented by epsilon UK. It is corresponded with the ultimate tensile stress before the U point. The stress developed proportionally to its strain. This region represents a elastic response of the stress strain curve. Releasing the stress within any part of these regions will lead to full recovery of the steel. Exceeding the U point, the steel starts to behave plastically. The strength develops rapidly until it reaches the ultimate value of the stress. And then the stress resisting capability of the steel reduces until fracture occurs. The gradient here represents the modulus of elasticity of the steel, which is about 200 kN per mn square. The main difference between the hot roll steel and cold work steel is the method to determine the yield point. The response between the stress and strain are typically similar. In the design, the response of stress strain curve of the steel can be assumed either of these two as demonstrated in the figure here, as extract from figure 3.8 Eurocode. The line here, as indicated by symbol A here, is the idealized response of the steel. The characteristic U strength is here, the ultimate strength is here. The ultimate strength is expressed in a factor K in terms of its characteristic U strength. The K is the ratio between the characteristic tensile strength divided by the characteristic U strength. For the design purpose, a certain degree of allowance is provided to ensure the member will not fail prematurely and either of these two curves can be used. This two curve is actually expressed in this two statement. You may design the steel member in accordance to this line However, you need to check for the maximum stress at UK to be within the limit of the K times FCK divided by factor of safety. The K FCK is actually this. 
The differences between this point and this point is due to the factor of safety. This represents the stress limit of the line here. On top of that, you need to check also for the strength limit. The strength limit is determined by epsilon UD, which is here. In another word, if this line is being used, you need to check for the strength limit here and the stress limit here. Alternatively, you may go for a simpler assumption in terms of design, which is more conservative. You will assume a horizontal response of the stress after reaching X youth point. With that, you do not need to check for the strength limit. Both assumptions is applicable for the design of reinforced concrete structure.